Section 11.4, phase changes. The physical properties of substances um, have to be understood based in terms of the kinetic molecular theory. If you remember that, the energy that is in a molecule um, will determine the vibration of that molecule. If given enough energy, a solid will break apart in, and be free of the matrix that it's in and become a liquid. So a liquid still has intermolecular forces, but it's not so highly ordered as a solid is. If you continue to give that molecule or, or crystal or substance energy, then even the intermolecular forces that, that tie a liquid together with, it, with each other will be broken, and that, that molecule is free to move at high energy. So you will bang against the walls and become a gas. So the energy really is what determines whether something is a solid, liquid, or gas. The temperature is related to energy, but some of the temperature will, will not always change when you have a phase change because it takes energy to actually break the bonds of the solid and become a so to become a liquid. And it, and it takes energy to break the intermolecular bonds that the liquid has with each other to become a solid, to become a gas. So what you're gonna see is energy thought of most of the time as, as heat will, will, something will get hotter and hotter and hotter and then stop getting hotter and melt. And then if more energy is given, it'll continue to get hotter and hotter until it boils. And while it's boiling, the temperature doesn't change. While it's melting, the temperature doesn't change. The energy that you put into it isn't changing its temperature. It's changing its phase. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's get some terms. Uh, from a liquid to a gas is vaporization. We would also call this boiling. This is to boil. When it vaporizes, it boils. Uh, you're going to see that boiling is where every... Uh, molecule in a liquid has sufficient energy to turn into the gas stage. So all of it's kind of happening all at once. Vaporization can be a little bit more generic where some molecules, maybe the ones on the very surface of the water or the liquid, uh, will have sufficient energy to become a gas. So vaporization is that idea of coming, becoming a gas, whether all of the material has the energy to do it or not, would be whether you would call it boiling or vaporization. To go back from a gas stage to a liquid be to, would be to condense. So condensing is why your mirror is fogged up in the bathroom when you have a shower. Uh, the, the liquid is in the air and it touches something cool and immediately becomes liquid again and beads up on the wall or the doorknob or whatever. Uh, to go from a liquid to a solid, you freeze. To go from a solid to a, a liquid, you melt. And melting is also going to be called fusion. Now, that's a weird, weird idea. Um, I still think of it as melting. But the heat of fusion is the heat required to turn a solid into a liquid. Uh, you can also go straight from a gas to a solid and from a solid to a gas. If you've ever noticed the ice cubes in the freezer get smaller and smaller, well, they don't melt because it's too cold to turn it into water. So there's no water pouring out of your ice tray. It simply, ha one at a time, the surface molecules have enough energy to escape directly into a gas. And so essentially they just shrink and shrink until your ice cube trays are empty. Uh, the opposite of gas to a solid is called deposition. And you can see that when it frosts. Outside there's, there is water vapor in the air, uh, even on a cold day, and it uh, sometimes can, can uh, do into liquid and then freeze into solid, but often you'll see it that it just becomes frost. It will just frost something, uh, crystalline, rather than wet turned to an ice cube, but more like a, like a snowflake. It actually becomes a snowflake on the blade of grass. It snows directly onto the grass. So we've already mentioned that, that materials need energy to turn from a solid to a liquid. That's called the heat of fusion. 
Heat of fusion is going from a solid to a liquid. Uh, the heat of freezing, I think is what you would call it. The heat of freezing is essentially the backwards heat of fusion. So it would be the negative heat of fusion. So if you want to think of the heat of fusion going from solid to liquid, the negative heat of fusion going from liquid to solid, and the negative heat of fusion would be the heat of freezing. That's funny, the heat of freezing. Um, if you want to go from a liquid or liquid to a gas, you're going to need vaporization. We'll look at that in a second. So here's the heat of vaporization. Uh, that's going that. You're going to see that the heats of vaporization are a lot higher than the heats of fusion. It takes more energy to get a liquid to turn into a gas to have all of the intermolecular uh, bonds broken than it does to go, to go from a solid to a liquid. It's also important to notice that the heat of vaporization is the energy when it's already at boiling point. So let's imagine that this is water and you have water, it uh, okay, gets, say ice, um, gets warmer and warmer and warmer up to a zero point and then warmer and warmer, once it's water, it goes warmer and warmer up to a gas point and then the gas can continue to get hotter. So if you see this kind of this hill, these plateaus are the same temperature. This would be at zero degrees Celsius this would be at 100 degrees Celsius. So the energy at, so the, this is melting. Zero is melting temperature, and this is also melting temperature. So this is at zero, and this also is at zero. Both are at zero. This is at boiling, this is at 100, and this is also at 100. So there is water at 100 degrees, and there is gas or vapor, water vapor, steam, at 100 degrees also you see that energy has been put into this in order to make that steam um, turn into steam from water. So this has way higher energy. So if this is energy down here, and this is temperature, then this has way more energy. So steam will burn you at 100 degrees more than scalding water will. That brings us to the next point, which has to do with, uh, with these graphs. This is called a heating curve. And a heating curve will tell you that this, that at zero, as soon as it's at freezing or melting, melting and freezing points the same, then there's a certain amount of heat called the delta H of fusion, the heat of fusion, which is the heat required or the energy required not to raise the temperature, but just to melt the stuff, okay? Likewise, you're gonna have here the delta heat of vaporization which is the amount of energy it takes at the boiling point. So it's already at boiling point. This is liquid water at 100 degrees. This is steam at 100 degrees. And the amount of energy that you have to pump into it just to pull all of those molecules away from each other so that they can become a gas. So the heat of fusion, heat of vaporization, you can see the fusion is much higher than the heat of vaporization. Also, if you want to say the heat of condensation, it would simply be the negative heat of vaporization. If you want to say the heat of freezing, how much heat is liberated when ice uh, from water turns into ice, heat is let off, okay? So that would be exothermic. Anytime you go to the right, it's an endothermic re relationship. Anytime you go to the left, it's exothermic relationship, okay? So to freeze, well, means that there was heat in the water that's not there anymore, so the heat escapes. To condense, means that the water that had heat in it is now somewhere else and uh, that heat had to go away. So if you, were to, if you were to cool yourself, say with rubbing alcohol, and that rubbing alcohol um, evaporates very, very quickly, much, much more than like 60 degrees Celsius rather than water at 100. So you put that on your skin, it will instantly turn into vapor and to do that, it has to take heat, and it steals the heat from your fever. And so that's why you would wipe, your, uh, wipe a baby down with rubbing alcohol, uh, because it cools them down. Your body does the same thing with sweating. Um, it sweats so that it, that liquid that's now on the surface is at a high enough energy that it becomes a gas and evaporates into the air. And when that happens, it takes body heat away with it. So you... Um, sweating actually cools you down. 
A dog can't sweat, and so that's why a dog pants. A dog can't sweat through his skin, but yet he can be overheated, and so the dog pants so that his tongue, uh, because it's very wide, I've seen dogs, they, it will uh, exchange lots of heat with the environment that way.